All right, let's go. With strength and determination, he pulled the lever. Run! The four of them leapt through the door together. The moment they had passed through it, each heard a cold electronic sound coming from their left wrist. The center of each bracelet a red skull appeared and began to flash. The detonator's countdown had begun. In the long moment that each of them spent staring at their wrists, there was your behind them closed, the sound of metal on metal reverberating down the hall. There was no way back now. They were committed. If they could not find the device or to deactivate their detonators. Hey, where the hell is the dead? How would I know? Don't give me that crap. Start looking. I already am. They began to run, eyes looking frantically for the device that was the key to their salvation. The hallway they had found themselves running down was a long one, easily 300 feet in length. On the right side of it stood a series of wooden doors, all nearly identical. They had taken time to think they would likely have to discern that the doors led to cabins. Don't tell me the dead is one of those rooms. Yeah, the, I'm dropping frames basically because my, my Comcast sucks. I apologize for that, but uh, hopefully the next stream will have less. And uh, at the very least, I'm trying to. Uh, I'll try and reduce the. Uh, the pre. I'll try and reduce the uh, bandwidth to see if maybe that'll help some of the drops. Junpei was too frightened to count properly, but as his best guess, there were seven or eight of them. Ah, fuck. It wasn't time to count them, to be sure. Junpei ran to the nearest door. He grabbed the knob and shook it hard. It wouldn't open. It didn't feel locked, more like someone had hammered an iron plate over the other side of the door. Junpei turned around to find another door and saw that his companions had already run to the doors of their own. They didn't seem to be having any more su success than he had. Their own words confirmed his fears. Shit, this was not good. Same here. It's not moving. Jun was the last to speak up. As Junpei looked her it looked in her direction, his eye caught something he hadn't noticed before. A small red light. It flashed at him dimly from the end of the hallway. That's it, over there. Even as he yelled he ran. He grabbed Santa, Lotus, and June and pulled them towards the light. Santa called out to them as he ran. Hey, how many more seconds do we have? How would I know? Our time limit is eighty one seconds. I know that, goddammit! I'm asking you how many seconds we have left! In all likelihood, Junpei figured nearly a minute had already passed by since the door had closed behind them. If that was true, urgency foremost in all of their minds, they arrived at the end of the hallway. The dead sat on the left wall, blinking almost tauntingly at them. Hurry! Junpei grabbed hold of the machine, his hands slick with sweat and shaking. He slammed his hand against the scanner panel. The other three quickly followed suit. With a grunt, Santa yanked the lever downward. <sighs> Lots of panting. Pant, pant, pant. Ugh, looks like it stopped. His hands began to steady. Junpei wiped away some of the sweat that had beaded on his forehead. As they caught their breath, the four companions began to look around. At the end of the hallway lay a heavy-looking set of double doors. Set into the walls of the hallway on either side of the larger door were two smaller ones. All they needed, they all needed inspecting, but Junpei began with the largest of the three, the double doors. How many times had he come across a similar door with a similar result, he wondered. Or perhaps, he corrected himself, more a lack of results. Whatever the reason, the door remained firm and unyielding, and refused to allow Junpei or anyone else passage. Near the handle was a small keyhole. Above the keyhole was a small symbol engraved in the brass. Mail? He wasn't sure what to make of it, and stared at it for a moment in confusion. It was June that corrected him. No, that's the symbol. That's not the symbol for mail. That's probably the symbol of Mars. Well, technically, they are the same symbol. But I saw a number of similar symbols near the main stairway. The symbols of the solar system. The sun. Saturn. The Earth. At least, that's what I'm assuming. Yeah, we really should have taken Snake, actually, because he's actually smart. 
We really should just take in the smart people because this is a puzzle. We probably shouldn't actually be teaming with like Santa. He seems kind of dumb. But we probably should have at least grabbed Snake because he knows stuff. Seems like a, a smart fellow. At least June seems to know lots of random trivia, like actually knows the random astrological symbols. Uh, while Junpei and June talked, Santa had disappeared. They turned to find him some distance down the hallway. He had gone to check the other doors. Eventually, he reached the last of them and jogged back. It took him only a moment to catch his breath again. Here's the deal. Now the other door is open. Then that must mean... We have only two more doors. Lois examined the doors on either side of the large double door. Each one had a metal plate attached to it. Junpei figured there were probably room numbers. My team is Ace Lotus June. The door on the left read B92. And the door on the right proclaimed that it led to B93. Alright, let's open them. Yeah! Junpei put his hand on the doorknob for the door that said room 92. Santa moved to the, to the door to room 93. They would made it through the numbered door alive. There was nothing more to be afraid of. Junpei and Santa looked at each other and nodded. One, two, three. In unison, they pushed against their respective doors. Yeah, so I was thinking about that, that Snake is a physical liability. But based on the puzzle that we just did... I would probably be assuming that there's more puzzles and less like physical, physically demanding puzzles and, and more like intellectual puzzles, in which case that he may be an asset asset and probably found themselves a new room. Of course, we could just let him leave him to die. There's just also that option too. June followed Junpei as he threw open his door. They turned around and saw that the door on the other side was open as well. Through the door was another person, his mouth agape. It was Santa. Hey, uh, it opened. Yeah, it did. Junpei and Santa looked at each other. They had not expected doors to yield so easily. Lois's calm voice broke into their thoughts. Maybe this is all part of Zero's plan? I can't say I enjoy being treated like someone's puppet. As she headed for room 93, Lois continued. Well, now that we have these two rooms, I'm sure that there's something in there that will help us. Let's find it. Santa and I will search this room. Junpei and June search the other room. Shouldn't we all go together? Oh shit. Seek a way out. At least there's not water flooding in this time. Alright boys, we're in a puzzle. That vase looks expensive. I wonder how much we could get for it. Are you gonna steal it? Ha ha ha. This is kind of a weird looking picture. You think it's an abstract painting or something? Looks sort of like a demon with an elephant nose. Oh, I see it. To me, it looks like a doorway with a gravestone. Uh, or maybe it's a... Uh... It, it, it actually, if you turn it sideways, it kind of looks like a horse. Sucking on a human's brain. Where's... what? Sucking on a human's brain? Where are you getting that from? Yeah, it looks like the dark portal. Can't say I'm, I'd mind finding out a little more about what's going on in there. Looks like there's a room on the right side of this picture. Uh, Dad boy, where are you going? Uh, I was thinking of going over to Lois's room. Do you think maybe you could look around here for a bit more before you go? There's a lot more for me to do here all by myself. Matches. 
Junpei looked down blankly at what he was holding, and then up to Jun. Oh yeah, how's your fever? Are you feeling better now? Yeah, I'm feeling fine. Jun certainly looked fine. Fine as hell? <laughs> Junpei held his hand on her forehead for a few seconds, but it try hard. It seemed her fever really had gone down. Are you worried about me? Uh, yeah, I guess I am. I, I guess I am. Giggle, giggle. June blushed and giggled. By the way, that boy? Hmm? How did you end up here? What do you mean? I told you earlier, didn't it? Didn't I? There was a man with a, a gas mask when you got home at night and you inhaled some white smoke and passed out. When you woke up, you were on D deck. Yeah, that's it. But is that really the truth? What? Dad boy, are you hiding something from me? Uh, no, why, why would I? Well, if you think about it, this is awfully suspicious. I mean, why would two childhood friends bump into each other in a place like this? Hey, I could ask you the same thing. Are you hiding something? What would I hide? Uh, well, I don't know anything. I mean, you're hiding it. How would I know? You mean like the number of men I've dated? Uh, do you want to know? Uh, don't worry. Uh, only 18. Times zero. Yeah, I guess I just haven't met Mr. Right. This is... <laughs> Fuck am I reading? <laughs> June looked a little embarrassed and scratched the back of her head in a desperate attempt to seem nonchalant. Junpei coughed quietly in much the same way. Anyway, I'm not hiding anything. Just like you, Dat Boy. When I woke up, I was on D deck. Well, you do have a point. I mean, what did. Why did Zero pick us? We haven't seen each other since elementary school. June nodded, and for a moment she had the far away look of, far away look of someone in deep thought. Why? Well, it's kind of weird that she's. Like, I would not think of this person as June in my head, but apparently this guy does. It's very weird. Anyways, that that's one for math joke, I guess. <laughs> that's like a like a five year old math joke. <laughs> Look what connects the victims. That will lead you to the culprit. Do you remember Seven saying something like that? Uh, yeah, I do. So, well, that's what I'm saying. I think this must have all had something to do with the classmate of ours. You got an idea who it might be? No, nothing. Oh, <laughs> well, if it has something to do with school, then it could be one of our teachers or maybe the principal. Or the janitor, or the lunch lady. You know, I can barely remember any of them. Yeah, I know. This girl's stupid. <laughs> that's what that that's what that inner monologue was saying. Junpei went back to searching, feeling unpleasant. It's time to ban this girl, man. I I don't know about this. I I don't know about this. I'm 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 definitely doubting uh, this MC's decisions to latch onto this girl. After that dialogue. Junpei went back to searching, feeling unpleasant and confused. Um, 18 is another number with a digital root of 9. God damn it. God damn it, Motakshi. Why did you have to say that? Elementary school. Elementary school. Was there anything strange that happened in elementary school? As he searched the room, he continued to rack his brain. Uh, so here's a display case. Looks like the drawers are empty too. Well. Dude, Lotus got the fucking opi at least. It's a bottle with water in it. This is a bedroom. They probably have it here because your throat's always dry when you wake up. You know? And my throat's dry, but I think that's because I'm a little nervous right now. Well, we did run a lot, so we're kind of sweaty. Hey, that boy, you want to take a shower together? What's wrong with this girl? Whoa. Just kidding. Too late to take it back. My brain's already working out the picture. My throat was dry already. This sure isn't helping. Look. 
Look, there's two pills right next to each other. I guess it's a double. Oh, what's up? You're turning red. Oh man, is her fever back? Hey, are you alright? Do you need to lay down for a bit? I I'm I'm fine. I think it's a little early for that. Jesus fucking Christ, this is fucking dialogue. Hey, are you okay? Like, are you are you okay there, girl? <laughs> a bed frame. Now we don't have to worry about falling off. I toss and turn when I sleep. She's blushing again. What the hell is she thinking about? This isn't a painting, it's a map? It looks like a map of the ship's interior. Oh, this is a great find. I think it'll be really useful. Let's take it with us. It's now possible to use the map screen. Sweet. It was during this time Brett knew he picked the wrong team. I did pick the wrong team. I, I, I regret this. <laughs> I regret my decisions. <laughs> I, I regret. Okay. Junpei took one last look at the map, then folded it up and slid it back into his pocket. Jun looked up as he closed it. The ship is bigger than I thought. Uh, yeah, it's probably around 900 feet long. Wow, Junpei is pretty smart. Uh, it must be one of those fancy cruise ships. Uh, of course, it doesn't really look like a cruise ship. Everything in here is really retro. Even if it's some sort of style choice, there's just too much. You remember what Zero said? On April 14th, 1912, the famous ocean liner Titanic crashed into an iceberg. After remaining afloat for two, and ha two hours and 40 minutes, it sank beneath the waters of the North Atlantic. Do you think that maybe this boat and the Titanic have something to do with each other? Hmm, that's a good point. I doubt he would have mentioned it if there wasn't a reason. Trippa took a moment to look around the room. You think this boat is... <laughs> the actual Titanic? <laughs> A replica of the Titanic? A replica? Yeah. You know, like a copy of the actual boat. Who on earth would make something like that? Fans. Crazy Titanic fans. No way, do you even know how much money that would take? No idea. But they all they gotta do is break even, you know? I like I like this Junpei guy's dialogue. It's hella good. <laughs> it's hella good. Break even? Yeah, they could use it as a cruise ship, you know, climb aboard a piece of history, sail around the world, and resurrect the Titanic. Hell, with marketing like that, they'd probably have a lot more customers than they know what to do with. Do you really think that people would want to ride on a ship with such an ominous past? It's like the site of the worst accident in history. Over 1,500 people died. I wouldn't be surprised if you just got cursed just for going. A curse, huh? That boy, do you believe in that sort of thing? You know, curses and stuff? Uh... No, I don't. Sorry, but I can't really say I believe in that kind of stuff. Tact was not one of Junpei's better qualities. I resonate with this. Uh, what about you? Nah, I guess that's kind of a dumb question. Yes, I do believe in curses. In fact, I think it was a curse that sunk the Atlantic, the Titanic. What? A curse sank the Titanic. The curse of the Egyptian mummy. Junpei couldn't understand how Jun had maintained such a straight face to say that. Supposedly, the Titanic carried the mummy of the priestess Amun-Ra, which was stolen from a pyramid. And they say that the mummy had a history. Everyone involved with it died mysterious deaths. Come on, I'm sure you heard it before. Nope. 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 Those who open the coffin will be forever cursed. Haven't you heard that? Um... Maybe heard that one. So you're saying the Titanic sunk because of that curse? That's right. Jun's eyes had lit up with excitement like a child with a new toy. Mm, that's that's stupid. I don't buy it. It's true. How can you be so sure? That mummy wasn't just a normal mummy. It was a real, mysterious, totally unbelievable... What's so unbelievable about it? Well, supposedly she was really pretty. Pretty? Yes, but she was a mummy. That's right. She wasn't all shriveled up or rotten or anything. She looked like she had, she was alive. Oh, I get it. It's that thing, I don't remember the name, where your body turns into some kind of wax. If a dead body is put in the right sort of environment, 
the fat in it turns into something kind of like candle wax, right? And yes, saponification, but that's not what it was. Uh, it's not it. She wasn't wax. Then what was it? They say that she was frozen. Um, frozen? That's right. The whole body was frozen solid. You know how a human body is more than 60% water? Well, all that water was frozen. The story says that from the time of its discovery all the way to when it got put on the Titanic, and even though it was carried through the desert, her body never melted. Jun and Junpei talked a little more and then went back to their investigation, but even as they did, his mind went back to what she just told him. That she was really, really dumb. You know, even if it didn't, it wouldn't really be ice anymore, would it? The more he thought about it, the more his head hurt. Like he'd eaten ice cream too fast. I resonate so much with this main character. It's light. Even if it's heavy, that's light. She needs to stop. <laughs> she, this girl needs to stop. She, she needs to let it go. <laughs> It's a dresser. There's nothing on top. Key get. A key. Do you think it's the key to the dresser? It's a box of matches. There are matches inside. God, what is wrong with this girl? The chair that goes with the dresser, there's nothing particularly interesting about it. It's a light. Thanks to it, we can see. A wooden cupboard. There are cups inside, surprisingly no one. Wait, what? There's nothing useful in there. Oh, oh. Ah. That's exactly what I would fucking do. Dad boy, what are you doing? We don't have time to be relaxing on the sofa. Just let me fucking sit down a bit. Maybe I shouldn't sit down. Do you not get mad again? It's a round wooden table. Nothing in this display case. Wait, what was that part? There's a room to the right of the right of the vase. Oh, what the fuck? There's a little blue platform protruding from the shower wall next to the knobs. It's for putting soap on. I use a shower once, so I know. Did I used a shower once, so I know? It's just a shower head. That's the bathroom wall. There are square tiles all over it. What is she doing, like, explaining everything to me whenever I look at something? Like, fucking get a grip, girl. Now let's check the toilet. And there's nothing there. The tank's empty, too. There isn't even any water in it. A collection of full and partially depleted rolls of toilet paper. Someone was well prepared. There's nothing too suspicious about it. Uh, yeah, why don't we go back to the living room? Okay, let's go back. I'll show you the meat. It's a shower head. It feels dry too. That probably means no one's used it in a long time. Shower curtains, huh? Let's try closing it. Dad boy, do you think there might be something on the shower curtain? Hmm? Uh, maybe? You want to try closing it? That's a shower knob. Let's see if anything happens when we turn it on. No water's coming out. Just a shower head. Okay, well.
Wow. I'm just gonna go check up on them. Is there something wrong with that? Come back soon. Oh, sure thing. I'll leave the rest to you. Okay. Leave it to me. Alright, off to the other room. Okay. Finally get the fuck away from her. Well, this is a display case. Check it out. These plates and shit look really expensive. Man, this writing is so godlike. <laughs> it's so good. Santa's godlike. You want to take a look? I fucking, I fucking love this. The vase looks pretty expensive. There are a number of expensive looking plates in here. It's a pretty weird looking design. It looks like a Holstein pattern. Hey, check this out. This is a pretty nice sofa. I know, it's a shame I can't take it back with me. A round wooden table. Wow, this is very nice wood. So big deal. There's nothing there's something on top of it. A candle with a candlestick. This might come in handy. Cool. Maybe we could light it at some point. Maybe actually I should look at it. That's a pretty big candlestick. If we light it up, it'll probably get really bright. Let's see what this says. Did you find this key in the other room? Yeah. Then maybe that means. Oh, there's probably something locked here we can use with the key. Uh, hey, Jimmy, that room's pretty dark. Did you have something that'll give us some light? So they'll give us some light. Yeah, I got that shit. Hold up. I know if I use these matches to light the candle. Awesome. With this light, the candle, maybe we can take a look around over there. If it gets so hot when I hold it, I want to put it down. Well, why don't you just set it up on top of the dresser? It's flat there. At least it won't fall over. Oh, yeah. Good idea. I resonate so much with this main character. <laughs> hey, it's got pretty bright. <laughs> this fucking guy. Now we can look around a little. It's fucking lit. <laughs> the dresser drawer, it's locked. Let's see if this. Yes. Yeah, it worked. Are we gonna make a fucking. I recognize that already, dude. I, I see that I see how this shit works. I see your plan, motherfuckers. This is the mirror for the dresser. Damn straight, nothing weird about it though. <laughs> Fucking love Santa's lines. He is a god, but a lord. There's a picture of an old cruise ship. Is it the Titanic? It's a light. What'd you expect? Can't really tell if it's burned out or not, though. It doesn't matter anymore, and the light from the candle should let us search the room. Curtain. A curtain, huh? Well, it's got all these metal rings. It's probably so you can hang it from something, you know? Yes, but it doesn't look like a normal curtain. The way it feels, it's probably waterproof, which would make this a shower curtain. A shower curtain, huh? Two pillows in a pile. Oh. A pile of pillows. Is that supposed to be some kind of joke? Hey, hey, calm down. Is this a pairing? Huh? Oh, what the hell? It just got dark all of a sudden. Maybe the candle got blown out? We should go see. And... There's a candlestick covered in melted wax. Hey, uh, what's this? The top of the candlestick looks kind of weird. You're right, it's all bumpy. What the fuck is this? Oh, it's a fucking key? What the fuck? It's too dark to search. Well, do I have, like... I, I lost my matches. 
I didn't get to fucking search that. No! Hey Junpei, with that tile you got, you think maybe you're supposed to put it in one of those empty spaces? I mean, the pattern does look kind of the same, doesn't it? <laughs> He's right, I think so too. But if that's the case, you're gonna need to collect all three tiles, right? Do you think we should collect all of them before you start putting them in? Okay. This tile, I think I've seen it somewhere. Yeah, I know. Kinda looks like the one we saw in the other room. Can can I grab it? You pieces of shit. You, you fucking guys. My fucking god. Well, I can't just leave June there by herself. Huh. What do you think? You're kind of her knight, or, her white knight, or some shit? Creeping me out, man. Whatever, dude. I'm going. <laughs> Nothing will stand in the way of the main character's thirst. I get it, yes, yes. What are you mumbling about? Did you figure something out? Oh, nothing, don't worry about it. <laughs> Why can't I grab it? Now I can see the full expanse of the shower curtain in all of its waterproof glory. There's nothing suspicious, it's just a normal sh old shower curtain. A narrow shower and I'm standing in it with June. This is awkward. Time to open the curtain. Fuck, what are we gonna do? I'm gonna go check up on them. Alright, there's one more fucking... Where is the last fucking piece? I mean, it was probably fucking in there, but what the fuck, man? I need light. I need fucking light. The light is as cold as quiet as death. Fuck. Fuck. Let me fucking take this shit. I guess I just gotta find the last one before- what's up here? There's a couple of pieces of R in here. Okay, right. Whoops. What haven't I expected- inspected yet? Fuck. Oh, what? Oh, the fucking room here? Oh, it's the same shit. 
Is there anything in the toilet? Guess not. The tank's empty too. Some toilet paper. We've got two rolls, I guess. There's a curtain rod running along the ceiling. Let's put that shower curtain on these hooks. Let's try to spring out the curtains. I bet there's some shit here. Well, that's pretty obvious people. Someone's really dedicated. With the whole this big, you gotta wonder if maybe they wanted to get, be caught. You're saying maybe the one getting spied on was into that shit? Maybe they were into, like, those home invasion fantasies. Home invasion? Interesting, I see. You two are real idiots, you know that? I, I'm, I'm bonding with... Let's try spraying the curtains. There's a hole in the curtain. If I look at it from a ways back, I can see a single tile. From here I can see what tile it is. Looks like it's fifth from the top and third from the right. Okay, I see. I see. Let's have a closer look, shall we? Nothing too strange here. Nope, the thing's not budging. Hmm. Well, that also means... Why can't I take this? I want to take this. Might as well put it back. If you miss her so much, you don't have to keep coming back here. <laughs> no, that's not what this is. I'm just being like a bridge between two rooms, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. You just keep telling yourself that. Now get out of here and go help June. Here it is. Yes, this one's loose. I think I can get under this with my nails and... Yes! Plate. Can I combine with this? Nope. Who would have thought this would be hidden in the bathroom? You did a good job finding it. So one side is a design like the rest of the bathroom tiles, and the other side has a black and white design. I think I've seen that pattern somewhere before. Assuming this tile doesn't count, right? Well, we have all three then, right? Because it's the last one's fucking in there. There's a tile with a black and white pattern on it sitting on the display case. Fucking what the fuck? No, I have three. The other one is in the fucking display case. Why? <laughs> Why can't I just take that one? Fuckers. All right, we still have this candlestick hole. I bet it opens that. There's a glass door in the display case. It's locked tight. Oh! God damn it. Okay, hold up, hold up. Okay, 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 come on, come on, come on. A key. A key. I have a fucking key! Fuck. Ah, oh, I can't open this. Ah, oh, okay. The part of a candlestick where the candle goes looks like a key. 
A key, huh? I think it ran to a lock I couldn't open earlier. Maybe now will let me. Where else did you run to a lock? I think we've covered it pretty well. Looks like that was one was lame enough to get her to blush a little. <laughs> the jokes. The jokes. It is locked tight. I can't get it open. A key. A key, huh? There must be something. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? That would be, of course, Lotus. Oh! Ho, ho, ho. Crazy old bat. Guess the stress was just too much for her. Did you say something? Nope, nothing. What the fuck is that supposed to be? That this. What the fuck? <laughs> no, I have a fucking key. Oh wait, I, I, hold on. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, fuck this. <laughs> Stupid. Can't even fucking see it, it's like fucking tiny as- ah! <laughs> Oh, see, see, I was- <laughs> I was already like, I didn't even see the fucking glass door. I was, so I didn't even think to click on it. Oh! <laughs> God damn it. <sighs> Pull that shit open. Fuck you, glass door. <laughs> Fucking glass door. Alright. 
Hey, Junpei, you got a minute? Santa had shown up out of nowhere and gave Junpei no small start. Here, take this. Santa pulled something out of his pocket. It looked like a bookmark. It had a four-leaf clover in it. Uh, what is this? I found it in between some of the cushions on the sofa. Pretty sure it ain't gonna be any help to us, but I figured you might as well hang on to it. Uh, then why don't you hold on to it? Santa gave him a wry smile. A re-smile. You know what I hate the most in the world? I got four things. Hope, faith, love, and luck. Hope, faith, love, and luck? Damn straight. And you hate those things. Yeah, you got a problem with it? Uh, not really, but... Jinpei tried to figure out how to best phrase what he wanted to say. What does a bookmark have to do with any of that? Santa scratched the back of his ear and looked awkward. Well, see, each leaf on the four-leaf clover has a meaning to it, okay? And that meaning is pretty much those four words. Is that a thing? It's like a flower language. Well, I guess it's not really a flower, is it? So a leaf language, I guess? Yeah, you could call it, call them leaf words. Leaf words. Junpei looked at the bookmark. Hope, faith, love, and luck. So yeah, I want you to take it, okay? Just touching it gives me the creeps. Take the damn thing away, okay. Santa pretended to shiver with disgust and shoved the bookmark into Junpei's confused hands. Junpei, what do you want to do? I guess I'll take it. This is so weird. I decided to take it after all. Why shouldn't I? Alright, sure, I'll take it. He shoved the thing into his pocket and gave Santa a last confused look. <sighs> Man, I feel better now. The thing was a real pain, you know. Do you really hate those four words that much? Yeah, well, they can all betray you, you know. Hope, faith, love, even your destiny. What had happened to Santa, Junpei wondered. How had he become such a weird fucking person? For a moment, they looked at each other. Well, that's not my only reason. What? That's not the only reason I hate the four-leaf clover. I just can't bring myself to like the number four. Is this guy fucking, like, weeaboo? I mean, I'm assuming this is supposed to be in Japan, but is this one of those... Yeah, are... Right. Come on, man, that's just silly. Maybe back in the Dark Ages that kind of crowd scared people, but this is the 21st century, and I'm a 21st century guy, and I will fucking tell you that the reason I hate number four is because it's a half-ass number. What? I resonate with this main character. Nine is a way better number. So what if it's last place, right? At least it's not some lame-ass mill number. Santa's explanation made no sense. Junpei was even more confused than before. You play? Uh, play. Uh... I play games, but I, I mean, I, I know the answer is not neither of these two, but I'm going to assume gambling. Uh, yeah, of course. What else do I mean? Baccarat, the best possible hand total is nine. They call it Le Grande. Le Grand. L-E Grundy. But the lowest, most worthless card, the, the, the zeros, they call Monkey. Just like the guy in charge of this game, huh? Zero's a monkey. Santa blinked, utterly stunned. Then he began to laugh. Ha ha ha! Ah, the guy who traps in here is one hell of a monkey. And that was when Lotus spoke up. You know, if you think about it, the Nonary game really is a lot like Baccarat. Apparently she'd been listening. Of course, it doesn't use any of that stupid digital root shit. You just drop the tens digit and that's it. Still, it does have the same idea of your final number needing to be a single digit. Oh yeah, I guess you got a point. And in both games, whoever has nine wins. The person who makes nine wins? Did you forget already? Don't remember what Zero said? The exit's hidden, but it's there. Seek the exit. So if we want to get off this boat, we have to make a team whose numbers have the digital root of nine. 
The only people in that team are gonna make it out alive. Of course. That's why it's called the Nonary Game. What? You don't know? Nonary means something derived from nine or base nine. Ah. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, we're at it. The prefix for one is uni. You know, like the unicorn, the horse with one horn. Two is, but yes, 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 yes. We, 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 we ended. Yes, 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 yes. And of course, the prefix for eight is octo. Yes, it's called that because it has eight legs. Get it? Yes. I see. Uh, so then Nona means nine. Like, four years of Latin, but I didn't remember that. <laughs> the only important one I remember is six, man. So that's nine. And what are the bracelet numbers we have? They go from one to nine. And our time limit? How many hours do we have? Zero said nine hours. And finally, get out of the ship. We need to find the door with a nine that says, Yes, yes, Lois, you're very good observing that everything in this fucking world involves nine. Yes. And there you have it. The number nine is everywhere in this game. He's got a real theme of nines for this whole thing. No wonder it's called the Nonary Game. Somewhere far away, Junpei heard the crack of stressed metal. It sounded almost like Zero laughing at them, or the sad, desperate scream of a pig headed to the slaughter. That's a very uh, graphic description. So I guess I'm supposed to put the tiles in the empty spaces. All right, I'm just gonna give this shit a shot. Uh, so I don't remember, but I think it's like this, and then this. Uh, where is? No, this doesn't look right. Oh, I think this. Oh, th th that's a cross. Oh, there we go. There we go. June is touching herself. Yes, I did it. No thanks to anyone else. Picture complete. And there goes the frame. What's this? What do you mean, what's this? Pretty obvious, isn't it? It's a hole in the wall. Like a hidden safe or something, you know? Anyway, let's take a look. I think there's something inside. Mars key. Yeah, we got the key, boys. Whoa, it's one of those Mars symbols. The door at the end of the hallway. It has the same symbol engraved in the keyhole. Then that's gotta mean, yes, we can use this key to get through that door. Oh. Jupe messed around a bit with the key he had and looked blankly at the picture that slid down. What's the deal with this picture anyway? Santa had only begun mumbling to himself, but it drew Lois's attention. She looked at the picture and paused. I think I've seen this picture before. Where? In a book. There's a British biochemist named Sheldrake. He has a rather interesting theory. I saw this picture in his book. Uh, what's this interesting book? Morphogenic field, which relies on the theory of morphic resonance. Man, yeah, we. De I'm, I'm glad. Okay, Lois definitely needs to be on the team. The next, after we meet together, we're gonna change the team. We don't need this Santa guy. This guy is crazy. And and June is definitely like high on something. She's just a dumb girl. Lois is Lois is reliable though. She knows her random fucking trivia, man. Which apparently is really important in, in this situation. Um man, I can't deal with this. Just listening to you talk about it, giving me a headache. Santa put his hands on his head as though he were in great pain. Lois merely arched an eyebrow in his direction and continued. It's no different concept to grasp. In essence, he states that the shapes of living organisms and their behavioral patterns are transmitted through a field not visible to the eye. What part of that isn't difficult exactly? Lotus did not look pleased. All right, how about this? Theory of the telepathic mechanism. Telepathy? Yes, telepathy. Well, perhaps not exactly telepathy, but it is close enough for a simple approximation. 
Santa suddenly burst into laughter. Ha 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 Are you serious, telepathy? Who do you think we are, kids from the 70s? I can't believe someone would actually do some serious research on something like that. Yes, I agree. Lois' response was surprisingly curt. Junpei had expect at least some conflict. I read the book, but I can hardly say I understand it. I'm in no position to defend or condemn anything it says. It is probably just someone latching onto a statistical outlier for some study and turning it into a ridiculous theory. There's no scientific merit to any of it, I'm sure. But even so, I... Anyway, I saw a picture like that one in his book. Lois indicated the picture that they all been looking at. Uh, after a moment, she walked up to a strange picture, examined it, and then spoke. I'm surprised that Santa mentioned 70s kids and telepathy. <laughs> hey, what do you think this picture looks like? Santa answered first. What do you mean? Isn't it just like abstract or something like that? It's just like black and white shit. There's no mean to that. That's it. What about you, John Junpei? Does it look like anything to you? Hmm. I guess it looks like... It's, it's the dark portal. What the fuck is Funyarimpa? A koi? Don't look like a koi. A dog definitely doesn't. Well, actually, it sort of looks like a dog if you look at it sideways. It does look like a dog. It actually does look. At, it really does look like a dog if you if you turn it sideways. If you turn. If you look at it this way, though, I don't really think anything. How about? Can't. A small boat floating in a lake. How do you see that? Am I clicking on Funyarimpa? I guess I'm gonna click on Funyarimpa because I don't know what the fuck Funyarimpa is. What the fuck is Funyarimpa? A uh, Funyarimpa? See, I mean, it totally looks like one. Here and here. What? What the hell is a Funyarimpa? What do you mean, what the hell is a Funyarimpa? You mean you don't know? Uh, maybe he's just trolling them all. How would I? How the hell would I know? How could you not know, dude? That's like, practically blasphemous. Say you're sorry, fucking apologize to the Funyarimpa. Jesus, you are such a rude woman. Another three seconds of awkward silence went by. Lotus opened her mouth as she shook. Jupe, are you just screwing around? Forget, I'm just gonna tell you. This is a dog. What? Oh my fucking god. I think my sideways dog looks better, but well, whatever. So, now we know that's what it's a picture of, but I still think it looks like a Funyarimpa. A TV show from Great Britain did an experiment once. They took two similar pictures. Both of them were difficult to identify initially, but once you figured out the answer, you couldn't see it as anything else. The first picture was a woman wearing a hat. The other one, well, to make it easier, Let's just say it was a picture of a dog. So their experiment. See, from this angle, I can definitely see it as a dog. Maybe it's just because they pointed out to me. That one with the woman, that's like a, a woman wearing a hat along. Okay, I see. Yes, yes. To Ireland. I want to see more of these pictures now, dude. I, I, feel, I feel like I've been had. Fuck. Those thousand people were shown the two pictures and asked, what does this picture look like to you? The result in and of themselves were not terribly interesting. 
9.2% of the people saw the lady in the lady picture. 3.9% saw the dog in the dog picture. Then two days later, they broadcast a new show. During the 30 minute show, they broadcast the dog picture and its solution. The audience was estimated to be 200,000 people. After the broadcast, it could only be assumed that the number of people who knew the solution to the dog people now told over 200,000 people. After another two days had passed, they gathered a number of research subjects from areas where British TV and radio did not exist. This time, they were only able to find a sample of roughly 850 people. Naturally, none of them were people who had participated in the first test. They were, however, given the same test and the two same pictures. The results were shocking. 10% of the people saw a lady in a lady picture. The previous test had yielded a 9.2 success rate. The change was not statistically significant. The dog picture, however, produced a very different result. The percentage of people able to successfully find the dog grew from... Oh, who gives a fuck, dude? Dude, that's, it's, it's, only, you're, it's only out of, like, a, what was their fucking sample size? Like, 800 people? Whatever. No, there's no significance in this fucking second picture. Oh my fucking god. Why? How did that happen? What does it mean? It doesn't mean shit. She now looked as though she were very nearly possessed and there was some mechanic about her manner. Why is everyone in this series like crazy? I would take a step back too. Does this have something to do with that field or whatever you were talking about earlier? A field not visible to the eye? So if more people know the answer, then it, the information will pass through the field? Psych! Her manner suddenly shifted and Lotus smiled broadly at Junpei and Santa. She waved her hand dismissively, doing her best to laugh the whole confrontation off. Oh, I was just kidding. You really shouldn't take me seriously. I mean, the things I just told you about are true. They really did happen, but the result of that experiment really isn't anything to go by. They could have easily falsified them. Falsified them? In the end, I'm sure that they were just in it for the ratings. They're a TV station, after all. At last, seeing that Santa had gained control of his composure. R right, right, right. Man, I gotta admit, you had me there for a minute. I uh, really thought you were serious. Of course not. Like I told you before, I'm sure it's all just pseudoscience. All right. <laughs> Santa and Lotus laughed and gave one another jovial claps on the shoulder. Junpei, however, did not feel so much like laughing. Something felt wrong, unclear. Like the fact that at least two of these people are really stupid. All right, enough nonsense. We've got the key. Let's get out of here. Word. Lotus and Santa walked away from the picture, but Junpei stayed staring at the picture of the dog. A field not visible to the naked eye. Morphogenic field. The more he thought about it, the more his head hurt. Can I keep the picture? Alright, let's go out to the hallway. I'll get June. You guys head over the door. Okay, roger that. Yes! It unlocked. Good job, Junpei. Good, now we can get going. Come on, what are you guys standing around for? Let's get out of here. Come on, Dap Boy, let's go. Alright, let's go. You found it. 